Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here with you. I believe we have uh, many people from all over the world. I think today many people from Latin America also join. So uh, welcome, bienvenidos. Unfortunately, the the webinar will be given in uh, in uh, English, but uh, we will think when we can give one uh, in Spanish. Um, today we are going uh, to learn about the role of international standards in fostering a circular economy. Uh, allow me to thank uh, the Basel Convention for uh, providing us this opportunity and inviting us to give in this uh, webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you a brief introduction of the e-waste challenge MOOC. Uh, this uh, e-waste challenge MOOC was uh, developed together with the uh, EIT Climate Kick, uh, UN Environment, the Basel Convention, KU Leuven in and the World Health Organization, EIT Raw Materials, and the World Resources Forum. Uh, the, the focus on, uh, on the priorities of this MOOC is uh, the environmentally sound management of hazardous chemical waste, cleaner production processes to minimize use emission of hazardous waste, protection of human health, communities, and the environment from the impact of hazardous waste and climate change and design circular economy mitigation and adaptation activities to lower the impact on climate change and natural resources. Uh, the MOOC is an uh, open platform and, uh, and uh, it's available on the web. Uh, you, you will receive an email after the today or tomorrow with uh, where you can access to the MOOC. Uh, it, is in, uh, it is divided in five short courses. One course is on uh, e-waste global issue. A sec the second course is on impact and solutions. The third is on e-waste children's health. The fourth is on reducing e-waste by design, standards, business, and policy and the fifth on inclusive and sustainable e-waste recycling. Each course is about four or six hours or, or le of, uh, of learning, so you can either do the whole MOOC or just do one uh, course. It, is, um, it provides general information, but it also provides in-depth in information for those who would like to, to learn more and it is designed for uh, academia, private sector, um, policy makers, uh, researchers, etc. Uh, I will give you a brief overview of uh, the course number four, which is on reducing e-waste by design standards, business and policy. Uh, we have um, Mr. Malcolm Johnson, the Deputy Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, uh, delivered a brief introduction on this MOOC, and uh, he also convey his message to all of you uh, um, to thank you for the interest on, on our work. Uh, the aim of this course is to inform and inspire people to create and implement solutions that reduce e-waste designing sustainable products, services, and business models, putting international standards and policy into action. Solving this issue together, uh, we have some international commitments such as the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which is um, which was adopted by the United Nations and all member states in September 2015. And uh, some of the sustainable development goals that are involved are 
more related to circular economy, we can see that our goal eight on decent work and economic growth, uh, SDG 11 on smart sustainable cities, and uh, SDG 12 on responsible consumption and production. Uh, for example, one of the targets of, of SDG 12 is aims to substantially reduce waste generation through prevention, reduction, repair, recycling, and reuse. Also, another instrument is the Connect 2030 Agenda uh, to globally implementing a circular economy and the reuse of electrical and electronic waste. It is a global initiative headed by the International Telecommunication Union that sets out the shared vision, goal, and targets of, for global telecommunication ICT development with the, with the member states have committed to achieve by a certain time, especially with the reference to the sustainability target. Some of the goals are to increase the global e-waste recycling rate to 30%, and raise the percentage of countries with an e-waste legislation to 50%. This will have the effect of fostering circularity in the economy by eliminating waste and the continual use of resources. There are also other initiatives, uh, for example, the e-waste coalition, that is a, a coalition on, uh, uh, formed by uh, different UN agencies, and also the United for Smart Sustainable City Initiative, which is uh, led, uh, coordinated by ITU, UNIC, and UN Habitat, and supported by 14 UN agencies. The, the objective of this initiative is to help cities to achieve SDG 11. Now allow me to provide you some brief information about our work. Uh, as you might be aware, the International Telecommunication Union is the specialized UN agencies on ICTs. Uh, we, we work in, uh, We work in three different sectors, the uh, radio communication sector, the development sector, and the standardization sector. Within the standardization sector, um, there is ITUT Study Group 5 on Environment, Climate Change, and Circular Economy, uh, which uh, we uh, develop standards on e-waste and, and circular economy. Additionally, as part of our work, we organize uh, annual events, for example, the Green Standards Week, that uh, join together policymakers, uh, academia members, and citizens in order to raise awareness uh, of um, e-waste management and also how to achieve a circular economy. And uh, last year, for example, the Green Standards Week was held in, in Valencia, Spain. Um, other um, we also, in ITU, we also uh, work on capacity building. Uh, all of our standards are available for free on the, on the website. Uh, at the end, uh, I, will, I will share you the link where all the standards on circular economy and e-waste can be, can, can be accessed. And, um, it will be also sent in the email that it is um, shared with you uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, today's webinar, we will discuss about ITU standards on circular economy, and we have the great pleasure to have with us Dr. Andres Andre. He's an expert of LCEA at Huawei Technologies based in Sweden. Dr. Andre specializes in the application of sustainability assessment methodologies to ICT solutions from cradle to grave. He has published numerous books, conference paper, and peer-reviewed journals on topics related to the application of LCA to ICT, and he is also the associate reporter of ITUT Study Group 5, Question 7, which is the question that um, work on circular economy, including e-waste. 
So Anders, I give you the floor and thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for this introduction, uh, Reina and Dan. And uh, yeah, we just go to the next slide and start off this presentation by introducing uh, yeah, what is a circular economy. Yeah, this is not uh, new to some of you, but for some of you, it's a little bit newer, more news. Yeah, in, in the, the simplest possible explanation is that it is an economy or a world without waste. It, just like nature, in nature, uh, there is no waste. Uh, all all uh, so-called waste products are used by, you can say, the next uh, user, you can say. And uh, as everyone understands, uh, the, the linear economy, uh, which we have now, it's not, uh, it's far from uh, an exact uh, copy of na the natural system. Yeah, and uh, we hope then that we can uh, introduce some ideas, uh, yeah, how we can introduce more of the circular economy. Yeah, we, we want to yeah, decouple the, the consumption of produ uh, production from natural resource use. This is also the, the idea. Uh, there are finite stocks and uh, the economic model is not uh, perfectly handling this. Yeah, the next slide shows some graphics about the differences between the left, the current situation, the linear economy, where we take, make, consume, and throw away. Uh, one uh, number I saw last year is that uh, 2 billion tons of uh, waste is generated each year, and 99% uh, of everything we uh, buy uh, is being sold is uh, kind of waste after um, six months so that uh, everyone can relate to. So there are thin circles of G regeneration, you can say. In the circular economy, we want to have much thicker uh, regeneration, recirculation of both uh, non-renewable resources and renewable resources. So in the circular economy, you can, we cannot have just 100% uh, circularity, it has to be toxin-free and also bio-based. Or if we think of the natural world, uh, the ecosystem, it is, yeah, it only has, you can say, natural uh, products um, and no waste. But uh, in the, in the techno, uh, techno sphere, we have a lot of uh, unnatural uh, material and synthetic uh, compounds and substances. So uh, I'm not saying that we, we shall only have uh, bio-based, but uh, could be synthetic uh, natural materials, uh, which are just like nature, but that's, uh, yeah, that's graphic. Oh, there are many challenges to achieving the circular economy. We are quite stuck in this uh, key Keynesian uh, debt-based economy of uh, creating a lot of uh, money, which uh, yeah, foster a very uh, aggressive uh, spending and uh, of, of new products and so on. And, and that uh, creates a lot of benefits, definitely. Capital, which you can uh, green, uh, other things. Um, but it also achieves these things, that you, you, you have perceptions of um, green circular products as not being so fancy and uh, you have consumers' uh, expectation for convenience. It's, a, it's very, you know, that's a fast uh, achievement. You're not willing to pay a high premium for uh, circular products. Still, the circular products, if you, if you have this green circular toxin-free products, uh, they, they, yeah, if you can combine with the new message that they are, yeah, it's a so-called double benefit for the consumer. That could work in the in the in the current system. So um, we we can revolutionize the system, but also work uh, within the system. Uh, the consumer is always right, uh, we can say, but uh, you can also create policy if it uh, if it uh, can still work like that. But yeah, I think that the circular economy is also the sustainable economy. We have tend to separate the circular 
Yeah, yeah, you, you work on that, the circular stuff and the waste management. And, and we, yeah, but then we have sustainability. And uh, they, this is another issue. But now I'm beginning to think that so color uh, rating and uh, this sustainability rating, this is beginning to merge into one score for, some, for the consumer. So we'll not have, yeah, this, this product is marked as, uh, as a circularity rating and, and that another label for sustainability. I think we will see uh, one uh, marking. Uh, I will get back to this. Yeah, you have some problem, lack of proper waste infrastructure, which is yeah, preventing this, but it, it's a small problem. It's an excuse. Um, the, the, uh, yeah, and lack of measurements and metrics. Uh, th that is, can be better. It's more fundamental. Yeah, Reina uh, nicely mentioned the, the, the UN uh, international engagement here to breach the circularity gap and a very highly uh, uh, regarded uh, initiative here uh, of many from the European Union is this circular economy action plan, which is well uh, uh, worthy of studying uh, much more. It's, it contains a lot of stuff, but you, you can read it. Um, it wants to use the circularity concepts, very powerful concepts, as it, yeah, intervene in the economy. A triple green bottom line of CO2 reduction. Uh, yeah, decrease the biodiversity loss. We have seen this uh, uh, very alarming report of uh, rapid uh, biodiversity of, of uh, species uh, loss. So it's tightly connected to the, to the use of resources. And pollution minimization. Toxic free waste uh, management. You know. So, uh, there you can see some uh, key elements that there will be a lot of more measuring required from the companies and other actors to report uh, uh, progress. And therefore, uh, it's a timely topic of today. Yeah. Uh, the standards will be instrumental to achieve this. Uh, to respond to this uh, action plan. Yeah, maybe I can say something that you have uh, issues which are not captured in existing and ongoing standards. The, the biodiversity is not uh, addressed. The quality of recycled content rules for mandatory recycled contents and uh, rules for measuring this. But you is doing some of this, but also very uh, many other uh, uh, standard organizations are addressing this together. Yeah, ITU have uh, published a, a whole bunch of impressive uh, um, technical reports or supplements and also recommendations in this area. Here is a division of uh, you know take back system uh, documents. And then you have framework guidelines and uh, those documents um, addressing the reduction of e-waste. I have been, in these, I've only been involved in one supplement five there. So it's been going on for a while, this uh, study group. And, um, but I've been involved in the last five years in some of the other stuff I will talk about here. But you, you can find these, uh, as I understand, now freely available for download. Um, yeah, yeah, L1021 is a quite recent one, which is um, addressing a hot topic of extended producer responsibility. So there you have a link to the circular economy action plan from the European Commission also. Yeah, here are uh, some other documents and uh, work from our um, SG5, um, connected to the circular economy, of course, recycling uh, related uh, standards. And then you have uh, the assessment of the impacts of ICT and the circular economy directly related to 100% is what we will go on uh, discussing further 
that uh, it's a lot of uh, things going on in, in this group and uh, a lot of experts working. Yeah, I would say it's ongoing uh, work also. Uh, I will mention uh, two of them. There are several others. Yeah, you can see it's, uh, as I said, freely available for download. L1020, L1022, and Supplement 28. Supplement 28 uh, and L20 are earlier than the other. The L1022 uh, was quite recent, published. Yeah, the L1020, when I, have no, I was not involved in that work, uh, but I see it, the uptake uh, of uh, telco operators have been quite uh, large when I, see, when I see this slide. It is, um, yeah, ad advising uh, companies how to implement a circular business model in a very concrete way, uh, manner. Uh, for example, these uh, strategies of reduce, extend work life, recycle, recycle content, reuse, and energy efficiency are going into some depth of this. So um, that is clear that ITU have played uh, an important role, and a lot of people around the world are reading these documents uh, with, with uh, uh, carefully, and uh, try to oh, copy them into their own business. So that uh, is good work. So even though if I didn't, uh, I was not involved in this work at all. I, I am very impressed that it has been uh, directly used by some some companies. It's very good. Here, on the other hand, I was quite much involved. In the supplement 28, it's, a, it's a, yeah, an ICT uh, infrastructure, so goods introduction uh, written together with Etsy as part of the, of the collaboration with the Sense and LEC. So, so that's the background of that. And the AL 1022 is, yeah, it's, it's more broader. It's about all circular economy aspects and how they relate to uh, their applicability to any uh, ICT uh, phenomena. You can say services, but also products, all products, also consumer products like uh, laptops and smartphones. So they are a little bit different, uh, but they, uh, you can say 1022 is following on from the supplement 28. But uh, it was a lot of good uh, discussions in these more qualitative and descriptive documents, but still you need that foundation. Here's one uh, nice picture proposed by one of the companies here in the LS Supplement 28. Yeah, we, we are, had a lot of discussion about this, the, the life cycle itself, and then where do these different aspects and strategies, uh, where do they fit in, so to say. And a lot of um, understanding about these uh, circles, uh, how, how wide they are, and uh, so on. repair, for example, is a very small uh, circle of circulation, and that is good. So curves in the use phase, and so on. So um, now uh, this uh, picture is a little bit dated, uh, perhaps because we have these Senelec standards, which have been published now and defined very exactly what is refurbishment and what is manufacturing and so on. But I think we did a good job here and we were a little bit ahead of our time. And that is the nature of the ITU in this, in this field, I would uh, say objectively actually, because um, uh, it should be uh, read more these documents because they, they include a lot of good conclusion and examples also from uh, many good experts. Here's almost the same, you can say, but from, yeah, something about 28 again, yeah. 
it's a life cycle, and uh, where, where do these uh, phenomena occur in a more uh, in another way to show it? Yeah. Um, yeah, the recycle is the, the the worst you can say then from from uh, from a sustainability or, or environmental impact avoidance point of view. And this is an ideal uh, picture. You you have so many different uh, ways to to do this for every little product has maybe it's different. But yeah, it's uh, we try to understand it in this way. There are many examples in the in the report. Yeah, some concrete example from this supplement 28 is that from the reality, from the real world, that it's not the, the circular uh, economy is, yeah, yeah, people are uh, elaborating, we didn't see, but here was a concrete example that you had, uh, return good in the, in the past model before thinking of circle, circularity, return good and then uh, disassembly, into parts, subparts, then each part tested on its own. Uh, can, can this uh, part be reused uh, with some refurbishment or reused in, in, the, in the same product? Or uh, recycling, cycling, which is the uh, last option. You, know, you could say landfill is not even mentioned, mentionable, of course. Um, that is waste. Then, but then uh, the, uh, some circular economy thinking in the yeah, you can say in the linear economy, but still possible to do, to, to uh, make money from this business. Mm, you, then is testing the whole uh, good, or the whole, uh, whole uh, product, and then uh, repair it uh, directly, uh, if, if possible, and then reuse. reuse it. Then you, you have a higher total, the higher reuse rate of the, the, this uh, mass of the product or, and also lower cost uh, by this practice. So the, it was mentioned like this. And there are, uh, now this picture is like three, four years old. So I, I think I've seen myself many new examples which have been fostered, not maybe by this standard exactly. But uh, there are things, this is, the sort of economy is, examples are happening now. It's not only theoretical. It's not only theoretical. That has been the danger of this uh, of this stuff that we are doing so much theoretical standards. But people are thinking, uh, and uh, I mean, there are many examples that the waste is too uh, cheap yeah, to to reuse, to to uh, let material goes to waste. That that is why it's done. But it's still more you can do. Yeah, this one is just reflecting again, life cycle stages, and then sorting, sorting the, the different oh, uh, aspects and, and um, sub uh, sub uh, sections of the circular economy standards. Especially here, you can see it's very sense and leg standards uh, mentioned this, but removability um, design for removability in the use phase that is not so so much emphasized anymore. But the others are still there, still going on. So it uh, aims to describe that, yeah, in the raw material acquisition phase, so design for recycled content is dependent on that, in that phase. And that, that is design for durability, it, it affects the use stage impacts, and then also the cost in use stage. So uh, I think. Uh, we have to also focus on the, on the cost uh, savings, and I think that is what many examples show here, that they find cost savings by, by circular strategies. Oh, general insights they, from, from, I mean, just these two, three, four, five standards, it's that yeah, you know, several useful useful aspects uh, parameters indicators have been proposed, uh, which uh, the ICC goods can can use. But you cannot have one uh, aspect 
um, to, to say, they, they, for example, the recyclability, just focus on the recyclability. Um, then you have a circular business model if it is 100% recyclable. Yeah. So that is uh, also uh, goes without saying, but um, for some products, it depends on the life cycle cost score and life cycle uh, assessment scoring. Um, some uh, aspects, for example, durability is more important for a uh, product, which is environmental impact is determined by the manufacturing. Then you, you are wise to prolong the life uh, of that product. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's up to the customer, at least uh, for the business to consumer products. It will be up to the cons consumer to how long they can keep it. But uh, they should be able to keep it as long as they want. Not as long as they want, but longer than now, perhaps. Yeah, this is really multi-criteria optimization, the circular economy. You have mass, environmental impacts, economic values, all of the aspects, life cycle stages. Yeah. So this we have many research uh, focusing on that. And then as the final minutes here about the new stuff. The, 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 what we have done so far is we have described generally IDs, very good, basis fundament. But now we go invite you into more product assessment. And this one is really interesting. The LCE2 is the working name. It's product circularity assessment. So it's like a zero to 100% scoring circularity assessment of products. It consists of uh, three so-called circular design guideline groups, and they have shifted from you know nine to six to five to so now. But now we have said these three are. Let's keep it simple and let's keep it as close as possible to existing other standardization. So we agree on these three right now, um, and they in turn um, contain criteria for circular product design, so criteria within. And the, this one, product durability, for example, very important one. Uh, if you would do an LCA of a product, and it shows that, yeah, 90% of the impact. Now, eco cost seems to be very popular now, eco cost. 90% uh, of the eco cost is in the manufacturing phase. Then you have better focus on, yeah, let's see what they are. I mean, you know, robustness and uh, software and data support, scratch resistance, component reliability, maintenance support. These kind of, um, yeah, these are kind of criteria. So, and then the idea is that you uh, grade this uh, qualitatively uh, in a scale from one to four. So there's no absolute values. Absolute values are not used directly in this, in this uh, method. But you will have a, the, the one score to score one is the best, and to score four is the worst. Yeah. And then it's combined with the relevance scoring in a, in a com combinatoric exercise. So um, yeah, you have to read it. it. It will make it very easy to understand this stuff. And uh, there are many examples already in the standards that it works. It's just to agree on it because there are so many, oh, not many similar, but there are similar approaches and, and criteria we need to have internationally harmonized to get all the relevant stuff into this. And that is tricky. But it's very uh, useful, I would say. It's, a, it's an eco rating, but it's a, it's a circularity rating. You know? So. Um, could be used and picked up, I think. And then, um, yeah, we have another one. It's a little bit broader, but it's also it's quantitative trade-off calculation methods. We have uh, many have thought about it. What where, what is the balance point uh, break even point for? Uh, how long can I use this remanufactured product before? It, it was not worth it anymore. 
when is it worthwhile to, to remanufacture and uh, refurbish? Is, is this kind of product? So then we, can, we, we have calculation methods involving LCA, as always, must. It's a must because you need to combine the, the circularity calculation with LCA always. Uh, so it, it's you know, analytical approaches uh, to, to show, I mean, what is the benefit of well, reused desktop, for example, or not. Yeah. And there we are inspired by uh, other, other work. And we, we don't want to repeat and uh, or create new, we want to repeat actually, repeat others, but make it very understandable. You know, uh, so you can just plug in your own LCA values and you get scores. You, know, you can make this trade off yourself. That's the idea of this. It's, um, we, can be, we see that it builds uh, quite well on other work and so on. So that is now I'm uh, finished with these slides and I open to your questions.